Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today, we have a ton of crypto news to cover, so sit tight, clench your butt cheeks together and enjoy this episode. First of all, guys, make sure you enter the Bybit competition. A link is down below. There's 30,000 XRP to be won and the minimum required to just Having your account is 300 XRP, so I think most people can actually enter. Link is down below. Go read through it if you don't understand, and let's dive right into it. All right, so XRP price signals to enter death cross mode very soon. The XRP price is going to enter a new death cross in the next few days. XRP's 50-day SMA, this is a significant little thing to understand, would fall dramatically below the 200-day SMA in the upcoming days. Analysts see the XRP's death cross movement to be a bearish market indicator. And I found that rather interesting for two reasons. One, a bearish cross, a death cross, whatever you want to call it, they're basically the same thing, doesn't actually represent further downside necessarily. It is a lagging indicator. It basically shows how the price has performed over the last couple of weeks um, or months basically. And it shows that the short-term prices are doing worse than the long-term prices. And we basically made a really big deal out of the Bitcoin death cross. But if you were to look at it right now, you'd basically see that from the moment the death cross occurred up to now, the price of Bitcoin hasn't actually gone down. And it's been a couple of weeks. And from the same perspective, putting all your faith in a death cross or actually trading such a thing, in my opinion, is not really the best of moves and is most likely going to end up costing you a lot of money. Because there's no way to prove that this is actually going to work out in this exact fashion. I think these guys just saw it. We're like, yes, put it in an article. Let's go for it. Uh, without any further legitimacy behind it. You might say, oh, no, it's happened a couple of times before. We had good results. Yeah, but it's basically like a 50-50 still. Because it records prices from the past. And so it doesn't actually necessarily point to anything happening in the future. It could literally be so that a death cross occurs and from that point on forward, finally things start to recover again because it can take, for example, 300 days after, no, let's say 150 days after a bull run before it actually starts to come into a death cross, theoretically speaking. All right, and should traders be worried about this, traders of XRP? Low volatility and a steady downtrend have been two major characteristics of the XRP market as of late. Dropping below the 65 cent support, aggravated recent losses and failing to hold on to its next support of 58 cents could have an even more cascading effect on its price. At the time of writing, XRP was being traded at 59.3 cents, down 2% over the last 24 hours. And since early July, XRP has traded within the confines of a down channel, which we have covered a couple of times on the channel before. One which steadily dragged the cryptocurrency down to levels on the charts. The lack of volatility disallowed an even sharper retracement, but declining trading activity and volumes did affect the price. However, note that whatever we are seeing for XRP is mostly replicated for Bitcoin and mostly caused by Bitcoin. One thing to also say is that if you want to trade all of this, by the way, Bybit is my go-to place. If you're in the US or UK... Go check it out for yourself exactly how you have to do that uh, because I don't think it is allowed over in those places. But the rest of the world, this is the place I'm using, guys. In Dubai, Europe, it doesn't matter. I use it everywhere. It works like a freaking charm. It's the best one as of this point for trading with leverage because Binance has messed me up a couple of times. And which other platforms? BitMEX, nobody uses that one anymore. That's the previous one I used to always use. Binance was kind of my go-to then after until I get messed up a couple of times and... Uh, no, I don't think I've actually used any other leverage platform. I think I'm using Bybit most of the time. Yeah, I think so. All right. Then they're talking about RSI and a conclusion. Once more, there's nothing to be afraid of, in my own opinion. A lot of people comment, oh, if you think XP is going to make you rich, you're crazy in the brain or you're stupid. Or this. You know what? Guys, my opinion about that, you already know it. Just ignore them. People will hate on, on, on these types of things all the time. People will hate on it, have their own opinions. Whatever, man. Maybe it's going to fail. Who knows? Of course, we always have the option open, but we are not going into all of this with the mindset that it's going to fail. Certainly, no. We're going to be trying it out. We have put some, I think at least I have put some money into it. We're testing it out. We're trying it out with the expectation of it working out properly and it, it making us a lot of money. Is it? Is it going to happen for sure? Obviously not. But the way it is looking, there's more upside potential than downside potential. So I'm going for it fully loaded, as you guys know. Uh, by this point, I think... 
I'm not sure, but I think the majority of my money is in XRP. I'm going to keep it that way for right now because I think it has one of the best risk to rewards out there. But of course, guys, I will never tell you that holding only XRP is smart. I'm always a pro to holding fiat. You might laugh at me about it because oh, fiat inflation knows it's pretty dumb. I personally still think it's a smart thing to do, even though it's at freaking all time high, the inflation, or at least the highest level for the last, I don't know, 12 years, 13 years. It's still a smart thing because having fiat or having stable coin allows you to buy the crypto dip better. And so I always have some in case I want to buy a little bit cheaper. So that is, uh, that is my side to it. Then billionaire bond king Jeff Gundlach said Bitcoin could tumble 27% from current levels and warned the dollar may be doomed in a recent interview. Here are his 10 best quotes. So his name is Bond King. And we should listen to his advice about Bitcoin. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the word billionaire does kind of tell me, okay, I'll listen to him. But the, the bond king part, bonds literally are the most non-risky thing out there. And so if he's a bond king, he, his stance on Bitcoin obviously wouldn't be that progressive, right? At least that's my own personal view on all of this. And talk about inflation, once more, yeah, we're talking about the bond king, right? When do you buy bonds? when you want to think things safe, but you don't think fiat is the best choice. I mean, I mean, I mean so yeah, let's, 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 let's not listen to billionaires on these regards. Once more guys, billionaires, a lot of them make money on your backs anyway. If you really think their opinions are that important, well, go follow Warren Buffett, get the freaking <laughs> crap out of Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, then Ava, which is a project I have supported for a little while, as you guys most likely know. I was with them pretty early, sold the majority of my coins, and I bought back a little bit later. Um, I, I cry still sometimes. Ava may build Twitter on Ethereum. Now, if you're not following me over on Twitter just quite yet, right now is your chance. My name on there is the Dusty BC. Might be your best choice to just quickly join right now. I'm going to pop it up for you guys so you guys can see it right here. Uh, there we go. The Dusty BC might be worth it to check out. But I do sometimes think about these centralized platforms. I mean, the channel here on YouTube has been banned a couple of times. I'm sometimes thinking, well, what if uh, what if a new decentralized system comes where that type of stuff can't really happen no more? For no good reason, at least. Or at least not in the same fashion. Kulostrov made the suggestion in response to Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's plans to build a new platform for DeFi on Bitcoin. And he basically said over on Twitter... Since Jack is going to build Ava on Bitcoin, Ava, uh, yeah, uh, Ava should build Twitter on Ethereum. I think kind of that it's a joke. Then again, it's not really a bad thing. So Ava, of course, being the DeFi protocol, Jack is building a DeFi protocol, which kind of, you know, would look like Ava because that's again what it is uh, on Bitcoin. So basically DeFi. Alpha should then kind of to mock Jack, build a Twitter on Ethereum to kind of let the circle go around. So it's a little bit of a joke. Then again, there's some there's some longevity in that. There's some, you know, I, I can see some potential. All right, then XRP Ledger Foundation opens a new office in this innovative European country. A little bit of an extension. I mean, the XRP Ledger Foundation opening a, an office somewhere. I mean, to be honest with you, who cares where they have an office? You don't need to have an office to be good. Uh, then again, I guess it's calling for centralization, which is nice, and expansion, because if they need another office, that's pretty nice, I guess. Uh, Beyond the Moon says, interesting, my hometown. Would be interested in hearing why Estonia, Tallinn. Well, a lot of developers are over there. There are multiple reasons. Estonia being innovative and advanced when it comes to regulations, signing official documents fully digital, e-citizenship, and one of the most board members being located there are the most important reasons, yeah. And, of course, a lot of developers over there. Pretty cheap country for labor in terms of development. And, uh, you know, pretty cheap in every regard from that perspective, too. So it's a good good place if you want programmers to be, you know, headed, I guess. Or, yeah, good place. Good good choice. Once more, inflation going up like a freaking rocket. Bitcoin Archive posted U.S. inflation rising three months in a row, 5.4% and the highest in 13 years by Bitcoin. And Will Penn are posting inflation at four. Uh, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> bada boom, bada bing. Inflation going up. We know it. That's why we're into crypto, at least for a good part. SEC, by the way, still not coming into the public's favor by still denying ETFs, making it last longer and longer and longer. I think the, EC, the SEC, I almost said ECS, is um, kind of trying to hurt its public image in some way, shape or form. Because once more, the ETF is being denied slash stalled because they can't come to a good conclusion because 
if they deny it, every time they say it's for safety of the people, yet they don't make regulations because, well, there's too much, um, you know, like, not safety. But if you guys get my drift here, like, the majority of these decisions are made on it not being safe, yet the other side of it is, well, if you're not making it safe, then it's never going to be safe. So that circle will keep spinning forever. The SEC is there to properly regulate that type of stuff, and if they don't regulate it, then how is it supposed to be regulated to get more things in there, which is a difficult thing. And then Dogecoin prints green candle as Elon Musk praises his son, Little X, for holding Doge like a champ. Elon, can you confirm, little meme? Elon Musk saying to his son, Little X, it's time you learn about money. And the kid is like, hmm. And the importance of, Little X, no! Because uh, his Little X is trying to buy some Dogecoin. And he said, Little X is holding Doge like a champ. Literally never said the word sell even once. It's <laughs> pretty funny. And, uh, and Dogecoin pumped up just a little bit because of it. But Elon Musk has lost quite a lot of his charm over the last couple of months here. Uh, which I think is good for the crypto space. I, I can't really say anything negative about it. But all right, guys, that was it for today's video. Once more, go check out the Bybit thing down below. People are saying, Dusty, why you talk about it so much? Because it is so freaking worth it. If not, I wouldn't tell you about it. It's not a rug pool. It's not a crazy investment platform. It's a crypto exchange. The only risk, I guess, a couple of sides, of course, always risk, is that you lose your money by trading your money. You know, so you basically trade. Or because the exchange does something fishy, um, which can happen at any time, don't get me wrong. Then again, it's the exchange I use. More money is on here for my own than on any other platform that I've ever been in contact with. So if you lose, I lose. We all lose. And every single crypto YouTuber that you know loses too because the majority of those guys use this platform. At least all the big guys that I know. MM Crypto, BitBoy at least talks about it all the time. Uh, the Moon Carl, Da Vinci, all those big Bitcoin guys use it. Um, I've talked to them about it before as well. It's the platform to be on, at least in my opinion. So once more, check it out, link down below. That's why I'm talking about it because the more people that enter, the more money we give away. And once more, it's completely free money. It's not going out of my pocket. Bybit arranged this. I just asked them if they could get it done. They said yes. So 30,000 XP to be spread amongst the peeps. Uh, right now, 100 people are in here. More people, more money, right? More money. So that's why I'm saying get into it. So once more, not because it's a risky thing inherently, not because it's such a shady platform, no. Uh, but guys, if you put money on there, make sure you change it from your spot wallet to your derivatives wallet. If you put the 300 XRP minimum into your just exchange account, you have to change it from spot to derivatives. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, but then you are, I think, automatically entered if you press the register now button. 